Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use displacement mapping to make a bowl of powder. Uh, so let's just jump straight into it. Um, we do have the bowl set up and the lighting set up. I'm not going to faff with that right now. But what's missing is obviously the, the powder texture. So I have some geometry here. I'll just show you uh, which one. Yeah. So that geometry is quite is quite a uh, fine. It's a very fine geometry. I don't know if you can see that there. Um, but yeah, that's the, uh, the geometry. So with displacement mapping, you will tend to need to have a lot of geometry or, or like more than say the standard amount because obviously the displacement mapping relies on kind of um, sub polygon displacement at times. So that's just, you know, something to bear in mind. If you're getting bad results, you might want to check your mesh. So anyway, let's jump straight in. So we're going to create a new uh, default material. That was one I created earlier, but I'm just going to delete that. And I've got the textures uh, ready to go. However, what I will show you how to do is I will show you how to create a bump map in Photoshop first. So let's just dive straight in and I'm going to go my texture folder here. You can't see that because it's on my other screen, but um, I'm just going to show you here because I've got the diffuse uh, ready. So this is just a, a powder texture I downloaded from Shutterstock. That's all this is. And I'm going to UVW map it onto the mound of powder that you can see there. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, obviously I've saved this. This is my diffuse. So this is just going to plug straight into my, my uh, base channel. And then we're going to need to use a bump map as well. Um, I'm going to use the bump map for the bump map and also the displacement. So just bear with me while we get this sorted out. Um, so what we need to do to create a bump map is we go in Photoshop, we go filter. 3D, and we've got the option here to generate a bump map or generate a normal map. I'm going to use a bump map for this tutorial. I don't need, really need a normal map, but you can generate them from this panel as well, just so just to bear that in mind. And so here's our bump map ready to go. When you hit OK, and you just save that down and call it bump map as opposed to diffuse map. I'll show you my texture folder here. I was working on a project earlier that needed this, so this is why I'm making this tutorial. So here you go, look. Uh, powder bump, this is for black maca product. Uh, the powder of the bump and the diffuse. They're just in there, ready to fly. So we'll close Photoshop now that we've done that. Don't need to save that. And we'll hide Photoshop and jump back into Cinema 4D. Right, so now we've got our mat set up. There's a few steps we need to take in order to enable uh, the displacement mapping. I seem to be having trouble remembering that today, which is weird. Okay, so here's our Redshift standard material all set up and ready to go. What we're going to do is we're going to drag our... So we're going to go into the Finder or, or Windows if you're on Windows and just drag these into here and get rid of that. And so here are our bump and diffuse maps. So uh, we what, what we need to do now in order to get the... Let me just undock this so you can see it properly. Undock. Okay. And so now what we need to do to get this working is we need to, firstly, we need to create a new node and we're gonna call this node a displacement node. There we go. And we'll stick our displacement node there. And then we're gonna need a bump node as well, a bump. And we're just gonna double click that. And now we've got these ready to go. And here's our bump and our displacement. Now, if I remember correctly what I did like 10 minutes ago, um, uh, I'm going to stick this, the, the out color of the powder can just go straight into the color channel here. Uh, and then this bump map will need to plug into the bump map here in the input, and then the output just pops into the bump map here in the Redshift standard material. Now, the displacement map can go from the out color of the bump map as well, and then we're just going to drag this over, over to here, and that's going to give us our little contextual menu. So we need to go to inputs, texture, and then text map. And that will then create a texture map out of the, the bump map. And then we can just pop the out channel. We can bypass the redshift standard material and go straight into the displacement map here. And that will give us our basic node setup that we need to do the displacement mapping. And so what we'll do is we will drag this. This won't work straight away. We need to add a redshift tag to the object itself as well. But for now, we're just going to drag this up here onto the default. Uh, the default is just the mound of powder. I'm too lazy to name my objects. And so here we have our uh, texture, which is applied. And we've kind of got uh, a rudimentary mound of powder 
but we can obviously do a little bit better than that you know and so i'll just what i'll do is i'll just re click on that to get my startup layout back and my node editor's gone down there and that's where it goes in the layout i designed for my own personal workflow i'm just gonna refire up the renderer and in the meantime what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase our bump so the bump here i'd stick this up to about so click on the bump map node and the height scale here i'd stick up this up to about i don't know six or seven let's, let's just go for eight let's go crazy and so now we see a little bit of difference here in how the bump is uh, behaving you can see here um obviously the, the roughness as well because this is powder um, it wouldn't be quite shiny so we can turn the roughness up just to scatter the light a bit more appropriately than what it would be if it was shiny so we don't really want it to be shiny and now uh, we have our displacement map set up and ready to go here um, we've got our scale uh, we can change the scale of this and stuff but the the main thing we need to do is go to our we want to right click or double finger click that we use a trackpad and we will go to render tags and ORS object and now we click on the ORS object tag and click on geometry okay we need to click the override checkbox and now we need to go down here let me just make sure you can see this yep cool and we will enable displacement and so now nothing much is happening because we haven't we haven't really amped it up we need to uh those are rookie numbers we need to pump those up so uh, i know i did that wrong so yeah sorry 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 um we're just gonna go in our displacement and we're just we can mess around here with the the maximum displacement and the displacement scale i tend to just i don't really know what they do to be honest i just i just slide them and they do stuff which is wonderful as an artist you don't really want to do too much thinking so so if you do, if you turn them up too high it does that um and that's not really what we want but it looks kind of grotesque so now let's just crank this down a bit and see what happens you know just just play around with it you can see here we got something resembling a, a bowl of powder uh yeah and there we go so we're just gonna crank that down a tiny bit more tiny tiny bit more and uh, maybe a little bit more on this one no and just just tweak and tweak and tweak what we really want to have is just the edges being bobbly there so it's convincing and it's not just a smooth plane it's displaced enough so that you can be convinced that you're looking at a bowl of powder as opposed to just a a, a picture that's wrapped around a 3d object and that that's that's the whole point of this displacement mapping thing um i will do another tutorial i need to do some investigation to see if you can actually bake the displacement but personally i'd be inclined not to do that because it'll probably generate a massive file you've got loads of geometry going on anyway and i think that'd be inefficient but perhaps there's a use case for it for it that i'm kind of unaware of in my in my basic kind of workflows that i do from day to day so you know if there is that feel free to comment and and educate me that'll be groovy but for now this is how you get displacement working that's just step by step how you do it so that actually concludes this tutorial if you've enjoyed it and you found value in it i always appreciate a like and subscribe and i do appreciate also the fact that you're here to learn and, and yeah this is just yeah this is awesome so with that i bid you all the best with your creative journey god bless you and bye bye take care and i'll see you in the next one